Greetings. It is I, the Great One Himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com, on the interwebs, also on the Twitterverse. Remember, you can send me email at God, that's G O D, dog spelled backwards, God at CYNLIBSOC.com. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, Great One, how is it that you're so good at having sex with other women? And I understand why you're saying that, honey, because you want to know why I'm not having sex with you. Unless, of course, you're a guy, in which case you're saying, great one. How is it you're so good at having sex with all those chicks and you're ruining it for me because now none of them want to have sex with me? All right, actually, none of you are saying that, but it sounded good. What you are saying at this point is... Great one. When the fuck are you going to finish talking about the book against football? Because you told us there was going to be a fourth part to that series, and you told us that it was going to be really hilarious because the guy, Steve Almond, who has a really small penis and some sort of weird penis fixation, is a raging liberal Democrat and believes that Obama is a god and you were going to give us evidence of this from the book, and it was going to be a fucking massive laugh a minute. All right, it's coming. It's coming, okay? I'm getting around to it. Until then, we had another anarchy moment today. And I want to talk about this, because the other day in some conversation, we came around, the conversation came around again, to the impending financial collapse of the... United States. On a semi-related note, I saw today, I've got a couple of left-wing statist friends that I are my like token left-wing statist friends on Facebook so I can keep up with what the stupid people think on the rare occasions I log into Facebook, which isn't very often because I just, I don't have the fucking patience and tolerance for it. And one of my hardcore communist and he will happily and again that you're calling people names well yeah i am calling people names when i call people cocksuckers or fuckwads or whatever i'm calling names he happily identifies as a communist he is a fucking communist he believes in socialism he believes the government should control everything the government should control where people work it should control all jobs it control should control all the corporations it should control all means of production. It should control health care, education. He is a fucking communist. And the communist had posted something on his Facebook page today pointing to a you know website somewhere where some person, probably a conservative Republican, because this guy's a liberal Democrat and he loves making fun of Republicans, which again, nothing wrong with making fun of Republicans. They have given us plenty to make fun of. I can't wait to see who they run for president against Hillary Clinton. It is going to be fucking hilarious. Again, for the record, Hillary Clinton is going to win. Oh, by the way, now that he, remember remember when all you fucking stupid people out there, let's go ahead and worship my greatness for a minute before I even get around to talking about what I was supposed to be talking about. Remember when all you people out there were saying, well, no, Hillary Clinton, why she resigned as Secretary of State and, and she's not going to run for president because if she was going to run for president, she would have stayed in the Secretary of State position. And remember, oh, what did the great one say? What did, what did the great one himself say when confronted with that line of bullshit? The great one said, no, you dumb motherfuckers. She's leaving after four years of Secretary of, Secretary of State. She did a pre full presidential term, exactly what was expected of her. The reason she is leaving, she's leaving during the transition. She's not bailing out on Obama during the middle of one of his two four-year terms. She's leaving during the transition when it's natural, when it's okay for her to do this, when it's expected, when it's a period of transition and everything's cool. And the reason she was leaving was to put together her presidential campaign team. This is what I said. And people said, oh, no, great one. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're an idiot. Well, gee, who's the fucking moron now? 
Who is the fucking moron now? It's exactly as I said it was going to be because I am right. I am always right. I have always been right. I will always be right. That's because I'm not wrong. I'm never wrong. I told you she was leaving her fucking position, Secretary of State, to prepare for a run for president. And oh no, people out there didn't believe me because I have no idea what I'm talking about because this is my first motherfucking rodeo. I have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. (coughs) Dumbasses. So anyhow, Hillary Clinton running for president, officially announced even though I announced... What, when did I announce Hillary Clinton would run for president? It was like, what, six years ago that I said Hillary Clinton would be the next president in the United States. Let me just remind you, for those of you who don't know what you're talking about, Hillary Clinton will win. It will be hilarious seeing what sort of sacrificial lamb the Republicans throw up against her. I mean, whoever it is, is going to get the living shit stomped out of him. (sighs) Anyway... So the stupid fucking left-wing communist, see the stupid fucking part, that was name-calling. The communist part, that was an accurate label. The stupid fucking left-wing communist, statist motherfucker I'm friends with, he posted this thing on Facebook where apparently somebody, I don't know who it was, I didn't, I'm I'm being, again, I'm going to tell you the truth because I always write. And the reason, the way I'm always right is because I always say what's true. I didn't follow the link. I didn't actually read it because I don't give a fuck. Here's what I deduced from reading the title in the short excerpt. This person predicted that the, that the economic collapse in the United States would happen in, it was either April or May, I can't remember which it was, of 2015. So essentially right now. And so my left-wing status communist fuckwad quote-unquote friend, Facebook friend, not real friend, I disassociated with him myself with him in real life, was posting this to make fun of this, you know, so as to point out that, oh, look, it hasn't happened. And I always find it fascinating because it's like, think about it, every day of your life, you don't die. But there's going to come a day when you're going to die and nobody can accurately predict it. Every single day, the sun doesn't start collapsing and start dying. But one day, the sun is going to collapse and it's going to die. There were all those days where the Roman Empire existed and did not collapse. But there still came a day when it collapsed. There were all those days when the Soviet Union didn't collapse, but eventually it collapsed. There were all those days when the Nazi empire, if you, I guess you could sort of call it a, maybe a proto-empire, didn't collapse, but eventually it collapsed. There were all those days the British empire didn't collapse, but eventually it collapsed. French empire, Portuguese empire, everything comes to an end. And the inability of the statist to grasp the concept that one day the empire of the United States will come to an end illustrates how mind-bogglingly fucking stupid they are. They're just fucking stupid. I went out with this woman a couple of weeks ago and we're talking and we somehow got around to politics and surprisingly enough, she was just not anything impressive and single mother and all this other shit. But... When we got around to politics, she was surprisingly astute, and we got on to the economic collapse, and she had no problem comprehending that one day the United States would collapse. And so there, I know there are people out there who can fucking figure this out. It's just not you goddamn status. And I'm sure there's a lot of right-wing status you know, who also, you know, USA, USA, support the troops, who think that the American empire, the United States empire, excuse me, as I always say, the United States is the name of the legal fiction nation state we live in. America is the fucking continent. I, I just, when people call the United States, it's America. Well, no, America's the fucking continent. The country you live in is called the United States. 
you dumb fucks want to talk to me about politics, you don't even know the name of the fucking country you live in. Anyhow, the fuck was I talking about? Oh, the impending decline. And so this idiot friend of mine, well, Facebook friend, posts this thing on Facebook, you know, with this gloating thing about, see, see, it didn't happen. Well, no, it, it didn't happen today. But it's still going to happen. I don't understand why this is so hard. Well, I do. I know exactly why it's so hard for you to understand. It's because you fucking statist are fucking stupid. You're just fucking stupid. You think the money is never going to run out, that the government is always going to be there to babysit you. And, I mean, hopefully it'll be there throughout... I, again, I do think the economic decline is going to happen during my life, but I would love it if it didn't. I would love to be able to actually get Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and welfare and food stamps and all this other shit. I don't think any of that's going to be there for me. I'm not counting on it. But yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to fucking rape the children by getting my Social Security payments while they're paying... Because if the population decline continues, you know, the low birth rate continues and all these old people keep getting older, living longer. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, they're going to have an effective tax rate of 60% in order to pay Social Security benefits to all these old fuckers like me. And I'm going to be 85 fucking years old and I'm still going to be recording this podcast. And I'm going to be going, I got my Social Security money today. You little fucking whippersnappers, you better get your asses out there with your worthless college degrees and ethnic studies, and you better fucking work a double shift at Starbucks and pay for my goddamn Medicare, you little fucking whippersnappers. I'm going to be that, you know, get the fuck off my lawn, boy. That's going to be me. I would love that to happen. I would love. I would love to financially, for those of you out there, listening, I want to financially rape the fuck out of your children. I want them to pay 60% effective tax rate to fucking provide me with my goddamn Medicare, Medicaid, welfare, social security benefits. I want to fucking bend your children over and fucking financially rape the fuck out of them because you cocksuckers out there want statism and I am more than happy to fucking give it to you. Having said that, <laughs> talking about the decline, we were talking about the decline, and the question, I'm getting distracted, sorry, I have computer shit going on right now that I'm dealing with. We were talking about the decline, and the question became, what, well, the main question became, is it going to be a fast decline or a slow decline, and what will those look like? And thus, I put in some contemplation on this because I wanted to figure out what did I think would distinguish the slow decline and the fast decline other than the time frame they happen in. And after thinking about it, other than the time frame, I'm not sure there's going to be that much of a difference. The... The main difference between the time frames will be this, is that if it's a fast decline, the actual market will be hard pressed to adjust. And so if it's a quick, if it's a fast decline, I think it'll be a lot uglier simply because the market will not have time to adjust. People will not have time to locate alternate sources of income, alternate ways of creating value that will allow them to then have income with which to purchase things such as food. In a fast decline, I think we're just going to see more, with, with a slow decline, there, there'll be a little bit of hunger and there'll be some homelessness and displaced people and there will be a few riots and things like that. But with a fast decline, I think those things will just be enhanced. There will be more riots, especially in the big cities. God knows when the decline does start coming. If you're in a big city, get the fuck 
out. Get the fuck out of a city. If you're in a large metropolitan area, get the fuck out. There'll be riots. There'll be a lot of homeless people. There'll be a lot of people who don't know where they're getting food. So anyhow, this led to the discussion of what did I think the decline is actually going to look like? So I'm just wanna I want to throw out these are my ideas on this. This is not developed. I don't have a fucking flow chart here or anything. I got some notes. They're a little loose. Things may occur to me. So anyhow, this is not supposed to be the comprehensive forecast of exactly how the decline will happen. These are just thoughts for you to think about. God, I got it. I just I got other shit I got to record too. Fuck, I keep thinking about things I need to record for this podcast. All right. So the thing is, so what does the decline look like? The decline will officially begin. There'll be unofficial beginnings to it, but it will officially begin in my mind when the federal government runs out of money. Not this sort of fake running out of money and not this shit where, you know, oh, the the budget has been passed and the government's closing down, but they still had money to barricade off the national monuments and, you know, they still had money for all this other shit. Not this fake pseudo shutting down shit. The decline will begin when the federal government actually starts running out of money. Where, there is, where things actually have to end. Where federal employees are not paid to stay at home and not work. But when federal employees actually stop getting paid. When the welfare starts getting cut. The official, I, I, I do believe that the first, the very first official sign of the decline will be when welfare payments, food stamp benefits, social security, retirement payments, all of those things start getting cut back. Not, again, remember, I'm talking about a a government cut where it's like, oh, we were going to give you a 10% increase, but now we're only going to give you a 9% increase and call that a cut. That's not a cut. I'm talking about when you've got a welfare recipient, be it food stamps, be it welfare, be it social security, be it retirement, whatever the fucking kind of welfare it is. When you have a welfare recipient who is receiving $1,000 of benefits in a month, and this person is now receiving $900 of benefits in a month. An actual legitimate reduction in the number of dollars given to a welfare recipient. Yes, people on Social Security are on welfare as far as I'm concerned. Yes, you can talk about how they earned us. I don't give a fuck. It is a fucking welfare program. It is a transfer of wealth from one person to another. It's welfare. Don't fucking argue with me. Suck a dick. When that happens... That will signal the beginning of the decline. And then we'll see how long the rest of it takes. So once the welfare recipients start having the amount of money given to them cut, they're going to have, this should be obvious, but I have to explain this in case any statists are listening, they will have less money to spend. That means they will have less access to food, shelter, clothing, electricity, natural gas, all this other stuff. It also means they will be ejecting less money into the economy. Now, as things continue to get worse, the government will have to cut more things. The government will finally have to start cutting subsidies that are given out. For example... This occurred to me as I was talking through this. I'd never thought of this before. And the thing to understand here is that all of this is interrelated. Here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, we have this new bus system. It's a bus that goes back and forth all day long in a straight line from north to south. It's called the Max Transit. And there's all this propaganda about how the Max... And it's great because nobody actually checks tickets. You're supposed to buy a ticket to ride the Max. You can actually get on it without buying a ticket because nobody checks your tickets. 
Apparently, I didn't see it, but a, a friend of mine told me that an article about this was actually in the newspaper. So they made sure that if people didn't know you could ride the bus for free, now everybody knows you can ride the bus for free, which is again kind of okay with me because when they first floated the idea, I thought it was going to be a free bus anyhow, like the bus system down on the 16th Street Mall in Denver where you just get on it for free. And of course, remember by free, we mean paid for by the taxpayers because you can't run a bus system for free, right? You have a bus, you have to put fuel in the bus, the bus has to be cleaned, has to be maintained, has to have a bus driver. You have to pay the bus driver. The bus driver has to buy food and clothing and pay his fucking housing bills, right? So there is no such thing as a free bus, just like there's no free lunch. There's no free medical care, okay? There is nothing free, but I thought it was going to be free for people to just hop on it and ride around knowing that it's all paid for by the government via the taxpayers. So anyhow, the Max Transit is kept alive because it re receives a large federal subsidy. Now, as the government, as the federal government begins to collapse and cut spending because it's running out, it's finally running out of money, Things like the subsidy for the Max Transit are going to have to be cut. The People's Republic of Fort Collins is no longer going to receive this federal subsidy to run a bus back and forth in a straight line all day long. Except on Sunday. There's no bus on Sunday because Sunday's the day you stay home and talk to God. Nobody, nobody actually goes out of their house on Sunday and wants to travel. Why would you run the bus on Sunday? That's insane! The bus also stops running at midnight, even though the bars don't close until 2 a.m., which is also incredibly fucking stupid. But then again, this system was designed by the government. It was designed by people not smart enough to get a job in the private sector. Anyhow, when the federal subsidy for things like the MAX get cut, the MAX Transit is no longer going to be able to operate because it's not financially viable without that funding from the federal government. So then the bus is going to shut down, which means the bus drivers who drive, they're either going to lose their job or they're going to have be reduced hours as they transfer to other parts of the bus system, which and the, Ma the bus system here in the People's Republic is more than just the MAX Transit. I don't know if the rest of the bus system receives federal funding or not. If it does, then obviously it's going to shut down too, or at least have severely curtailed operating hours and operating routes because they're not going to be able to afford it. So as the government shuts down, keep in mind that all of this has an effect that goes beyond the people directly affected. Right? The welfare recipients have less money to spend. This affects the places where they would spend their money, like the grocery store and like Starbucks. As the federal funding for bullshit projects dries up, you know, the federal funding for giving weapons and funding to police departments and for bus systems and just for all the other shit, for all the fucking, okay, all the, com well, I'm, I'm going to get there. I, I'm trying to get, now I'm starting to get ahead of myself. So there's going to be a domino effect. So as the, mil as the government runs out of money, who is going to be affected by this? Well, obviously the welfare recipients. Who else is going to be affected? And keep in mind, well over 50% of the population of the United States is employed by the government. That is to say that their primary if not only source of income, is the federal government of the United States, which is taking money away from the taxpayers and redistributing it. And by that, I of course mean every person who works for the federal government, the bureaucrats, the politicians, you know, the, the DEA agents, the park rangers, all of those people, they are dependent on the federal government, on the taxpayers, for their income. And then everybody on welfare is dependent on the federal government for their income. As the federal government runs out of money and has to start making real, actual, legitimate, true cuts, not these phantom cuts, 
right? Not the 10% increase is reduced to a 9% increase, actual cuts. All of those people are going to, over 50% of the population will start finding out they have less money to pay their rent, to buy their food. Who else is going to be affected? Well, the military at some point is going to be affected. When the Soviet Union collapsed, it finally reached the point where the Soviet soldiers were not getting paid and they just walked away from their post because they weren't getting any money. At some point, the military is going to start running out of money as well. You're going to have a bunch more unemployed or underemployed people. And when I say unemployed people, <clears throat> remember, we're not using the fake type unemployment statistics like the government uses, where if you haven't been looking for a job, like I technically am unemployed in the sense I don't have a 40 hour a week job, but I'm not on the unemployed statistics because I've been unemployed for so long that I am considered to no longer be looking for a job, so I don't count, right? So all the unemployment statistics you see, these are these fake statistics that are not actually counting the number of people over the age of 18. Well, just 18 is arbitrary, but it is what it is. Who could work, that is to say, you know, and, and let, you can work unless you're paralyzed from the neck down, you can pretty much do a fucking job. So the unemployment statistics you see it's not the percentage of the population over the age of 18 who doesn't have a job. <clears throat> Throughout the course of this, when I say percent of people unemployed, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the number of people in the United States over the age of 18 who are not paralyzed from the neck down and don't have a job. So when you add up all the people who are going to be losing money because the welfare cuts are going to happen, the soldiers who are going to be losing money because the cuts are going to happen. And again, it'll be gradual. At first, they will just be cuts. But eventually, the elimination will come. Eventually, they will have to say, we can't give you any money, right? You are a federal park ranger. We don't have money for you anymore. You work at the IRS. You are a clerk at the IRS. We don't have money to pay you anymore your job is gone, right? We are going, first they will stop bringing in new soldiers and then eventually, instead of forcing soldiers, which they could do this, forcing, I know this because I was in the military, you weren't, shut the fuck up. Instead of forcing soldiers to stay in after their enlistment has ended, there will come a point where they will be ETSing soldiers before their enlistment is actually up because they will be running out of money. we will very quickly reach a point where over 50% of the population in the United States will be unemployed and will not have a source of income at all. No regular source of income to pay their bills, to buy their food, to pay their rent. About this time is when the riots will begin. And again, there may only be a few riots here and there, or maybe a lot of riots all over the place. I think, it, again, it will depend on how quickly this happens. If it happens quickly, you're going to have more riots. If it happens slowly, you're going to have fewer riots. As this happens, who else is going to find themselves unemployed and without a source of income? <clears throat> well, everybody who works in the military industrial complex or works indirectly for the military industrial complex. Nobody can afford to buy fighter fighter. Uh, craft. Nobody can afford to buy aircraft carriers. Nobody can afford to buy tanks except for the federal government. When the federal government stops buying bombers, the people who make the bombers are going to start losing their jobs. Right? The military industrial complex corporations will be able to ride on their savings for a while, but at some point they will have to start getting rid of employees in order to stay financially solvent. And as the federal government buys fewer bombers, 
whoever it is that manufactures the steel used for the bombers or you know whatever metal it is all of this other stuff again there'll be repercussions down the economic supply chain right all the people who provide the military industrial complex with the raw materials it uses to build the bombers and the tanks the missiles, the drones, all of these people will also be faced with having to cut their cost, which at some point will turn into actually letting employees go as well. So now you've got more unemployed people. Federal prisons at some point will have to start letting people go. The schools, the public school systems, at some point the public school systems will have to start letting teachers go. And keep in mind, I talked in a cast some time ago where I read a post I originally saw on Captain Capitalism's blog. Oh, that's actually done. Hang on a second. I'm going to be totally distracted. Everybody just deal with it. And now, can I get fucking Windows? Let's try this. All right where up in Canada they were the government in Canada was doing some budget cuts and cutting people's salaries and cutting positions and a bunch of feminists were whining about how this was disproportionately affecting women because of course there are more women working for the government than men because public sector jobs don't require much intelligence they're easy to get you can get them with bullshit degrees all this other stuff as all of this happens women will be disproportionately affected for the same reason. Women are more likely to be on welfare. Women get more money from welfare. Women live longer than men, so therefore our women are, there's going to be more women on Social Security, retirement, yada, yada, yada. Okay, in the military-industrial complex, maybe not so disproportionately for women. In the military, I think it will be disproportionately towards women initially because as the military has to start ETSing people early, Sorry, girls, they're going to ETS the early. The, the targets of the early ETSing will be initially women. They're going to get rid of the women first. Schools, the public schools, are going to start losing money. They're going to start shutting down. They're going to start fucking having to lay off fire employees. Who primarily teaches in public schools? Women. Women will be disproportionately uh, affected by this. Same thing with colleges. Colleges... Again, I worked at a college for eight years in the research department. Virtually everybody, I mean everybody, there's a virtually, everybody who was doing research there received federal funding to do their research. When the government starts running out of money, all of this federal funding for bullshit science, and yes, most of it, most of it was bullshit science. I've talked about it before. If you care, you can go back, you can find them. I've talked about people injecting rats with arsenic to see how much arsenic you have to put in a rat for it to die. We know arsenic is poisonous. This is bullshit science. This is not scientific research that needs to be done. This is bullshit. Some of it is valid. Cancer research, good stuff. Okay, Diabetes research, good stuff. But much of it is just pure bullshit. But all of this federal funding for this stuff is going to start drying up. And again, this the colleges losing money and having to get rid of researchers, get rid of scientists, get rid of lab assistants, and eventually get rid of teachers, where they'll start with the adjuncts, not the tenured people, of course. All of this is going to adversely affect women more than it is men. When the corporate... Now remember, there's a trickle... There's the trickle down. We like to say trickle down because it's trickle down economics, man. The liberals fucking love that. There's a trickle down effect as all these people lose their jobs, right? There's going to be less traffic at Starbucks. There's going to be less people buying big screen TVs and whatever the fuck it is you people buy. I don't really know because I don't spend money on stuff. Again, like the last piece of stuff I bought, I bought a new toner cartridge for my computer printer. That's the closest I've come to buying stuff in months. 
So whatever kind of stuff it is you people buy, the corporations that manufacture this stuff are going to be losing money because you're not going to be buying as much stuff because over 50% of the population is not going to have a source of income. And that means that these corporations are going to have to start cutting. They're going to have to start saving money or they're going to go out of business. So they're going to start cutting employee pay. They're going to start laying people off, getting rid of employees. Who are they going to get rid of first? I've said this before. They're going to get rid of the HR department, primarily women, and they're going to cut half of their janitorial department because people always think janitors can do more work. You know, I've talked before about how janitor, you know, without janitors, corporate America would shut down because these fucking people who work in the cubicles aren't going to take out their own trash and clean their own toilets. And the janitorial staff, to a large extent, will also be women losing their jobs. So women are going to lose their jobs like motherfuckers when the economic collapse happens. Fact. And I've talked about this before, and we're getting to what I've talked about before. I've done a whole podcast about this. As all of this comes downhill, what else is going to be affected by this? Well, with all these women, a disproportionate number of women, losing their jobs, not having a source of income, not having money to spend, retail is going to be affected. Stefan Molyneux talks about this all the time. I've repeated it. Go to a shopping mall, walk in there, look around. Most of the stores in a shopping mall are selling things to women. Here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, go downtown, walk around downtown. Okay? Yeah, there's bars and there's restaurants, but most of the retail stores are selling things to women. We got Ace Hardware, that's a guy place. Other than that, it's almost all, not completely, I think there's, and God knows things come and go in Fort Collins so fucking fast, especially in the downtown area. There's one retail store, I can't for the life remember the name of it, it seems to be geared towards men and women, and there, there was a men's, that, that went out of business, never mind, that closed. Almost all the retail stores in Old Town Fort Collins are geared towards women. And they're almost, because I go in them sometimes to you know, flirt with girls and meet people, they're all staffed almost exclusively by women. So as women stop spending money in the retail sector, buying all of this junk, just and you go in these stores, it's all these little knickknacks and little thingies that you would just buy and put on a shelf. And I mean, okay, they're, they're cute and they're funny and they were made by slave labor in China and they were sailed across the ocean on a ship burning fossil fuels, driven across the United States on a truck that burns fossil fuels and you care about the environment so fucking much. Right. But all of this shit is useless. And as women run out of money because they don't have jobs... Oh, and I... I okay, oh, fuck, I completely forgot about that. I gotta... I, I gotta back up. No, I don't have to back up, actually. This is working. <laughs> this is working. So, okay, at this point, the women don't have much money anymore. And the retail stores, which primarily sell to women, are going to start losing money. They're going to also have to get rid of employees in order to cut their cost. So again, you're going to have more women losing their jobs. Now, as all of this is happening, people who live in the United States aren't very bright. And people are going to think, oh, well, this is just a temporary thing. I've got my credit cards. I'll just use my credit cards until I get a job and yada, yada, yada. So as the economic decline happens, as more and more people, male and female, lose their jobs, many of them are going to start utilizing credit in order to attempt to maintain their standard of living. Because once you're used to drinking your three dollar Starbucks coffee every morning, you're not going to give that up easily just because you don't have a job. You're going to go buy your three dollar Starbucks with your credit card. So there's going to be a lot of credit 
getting used. The public debt is going to go up. And eventually, these people are not going to get jobs. These people are not going to find a new source of income. And they're going to start defaulting on their credit card payments, on their mortgages, on their home loans, on their automobile loans, on their business loans, all of this stuff. The banks, at this point, the banks are going to start, say it with me, running out of money. And this time, there will be no Bush Obama to bail them out. The banks don't have any money in reserve. They loan everything out. They do all this stupid shit. They've been saved. They were saved the last time. This time around, there will be no one to bail them out. And the banks will begin to fail. When there's no more banks, when there's no more credit cards, I mean, by this point, by the time we've reached this point in the cycle, easily 70%, right? This is after the, the federal government has run out of money, the people on welfare are not getting welfare checks, the old people on Social Security not getting their retirement, government employees have been laid off, government agencies, entire agencies are shut down, non-existent because there's no funding. There's no funding for the research at the colleges. There's no funding for the colleges. The public schools are shutting down. All of this, and then all of this is going through society, right? Again, retail stores are shutting down and cutting employees. At this point, you're going to be looking at 65% of people in the United States over the age of 18 not paralyzed from the neck down. 65% are not going to have a source of income. They're going to be living on credit cards. And when the banks start to collapse, there's going to be nothing for them. And there's nothing the banks can do, right? The banks can go, well, somebody defaults on their home loan, so the bank goes and takes their house. What the fuck is the bank going to do with their house? Who's going to buy the house? Nobody's going to be able to afford to buy a house. Right? So you default on your automobile loan. Great. The bank comes and takes your automobile. What the fuck are they going to do with it? Nobody's going to buy it. You're going to have 65% of the population or more. I think 65% is the minimum. This is when this is the point where things are really bad. Right? This isn't on day 1 or day 20. This isn't even maybe in the first year or the second year or the third year. But at some point 65% of the people can have no source of income, none, nothing. Zero, zilch. So the bank, the banks by this time there might only be one bank. <laughs> the rate it's going, the banks, they can repossess all they want. They're not going to be able to sell any of that shit. The banks are going to collapse. More people unemployed. Now, all these people who are living on their credit cards will not even have a credit card anymore. And at this point, this is when the economic restructuring will have to happen. People who had these worthless jobs and people yada, 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 they will have to find legitimate ways to create value. People who have legitimate ways to create value will, of course, be becoming rich and be able to call the shots. Agriculture will reemerge because there's going to be all these people who don't have any way to buy food. They're going to need to trade things for food or grow their own food or whatnot. And there's going to be a giant restructuring of the economy. And we will see what actually is and is not valuable. And there will be social changes to go along with this. And I've talked about this before, did a whole podcast on this. 
women, because they will be disproportionately affected, are going to have to go back to actually being feminine and attractive. And all these women out there with the tattoos and the piercings and the just their ugliness and their shitty personalities, they're going to starve to death and die. Well, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but there are a bunch of college kids outside in the rain. It's raining here. It's monsoon season. Screaming. I have no idea what they're screaming about. Not sure I care. They'll be gone pretty soon. Summer is coming. The little fucking shits will leave town. It'll be nice here again. So women will have to become feminine because they're going to need to get a man who's going to financially provide for them. And we're going to see not just an economic shift as the economy restructures, as the market restructures the economy so that people are actually getting paid to do things that are worthwhile and that are valuable instead of the system we have now where we pay people to do things like, you know, we, we pay people for stuff like gender studies and we pay people for stuff like social work and we pay people for stuff like working at the IRS. You know, all these things that don't actually create any value. All that shit's going to die, right? We pay police officers to shoot innocent people, right? In a market society, nobody's going to pay somebody to spray tear gas in the face of a peaceful protester. Right? None of that shit's going to exist anymore. We pay people to drive up and down in the max bus with nobody on the bus, right? Nobody's going to pay for that shit in a market economy. So all that shit's going to come to an end as the market restructures the economy so that people only get paid money when they create legitimate value for other humans. And the other part of the restructuring will be the social restructuring where women and men will move back to this thing where they come together and they get married and they stick with each other and the man works and the woman stays home and takes care of things. Because as the number of jobs become limited due to the economic collapse and due to the fact that jobs have to actually create value for other people, there are not going to be enough employment opportunities for all the men and all the women. And aside from that, as I've said, you know, look at women, look at, again, not saying men don't have worthless degrees, but if you find somebody who's got a fucking college degree in gender studies with a fucking minor in journalism and another minor in international communications, odds are that's a woman. It's true. It may hurt your fucking feelings. You may call me racist, sexist, homophobic. It's still fucking true, right? The names you call me don't mean anything. If I, if I say to you, the sun is large, hot, and far away, and you tell me that I'm homophobic, I mean, maybe I am. Maybe I, maybe I hate gays. Maybe I killed a gay person last night. The sun is still large, hot, and far away. It doesn't fucking matter what my feelings about gays are, right? It's the same thing with this. It doesn't matter what my feelings about women are. I'd love to find a woman who goes, gets a job, and supports me. That'd be great. Reality says that when the economic collapse happens, women will be disproportionately affected. They will disproportionately lose their jobs. Women, for the most part, have skills that are not useful in a market economy. They're only useful in the sort of status economy where we have now, where people do get paid money to do shit that doesn't actually create value. And in order to compensate for that, chicks are going to have to hook up with men. Not hook up as in one night stand, hook up as in form a lasting relationship with a man. And in order to do that, chicks are going to have to actually start being attractive again. And as far as I'm concerned, that will be the greatest part of the entire economic decline, seeing the state collapse. And of course, what I didn't mention in any of this is, of course, the state governments, right? Eventually, 
Now, the state governments may actually survive the collapse of the federal government because the state governments don't have $16 trillion debts. So now, what happens with the state governments, I think, is going to, of course, vary from place to place. But I do think the collapse, the financial collapse of the federal government does not necessarily mean the financial collapse of any of the governments of the individual states. Now, some of them, I think, may collapse, but some of them, I think, are going to come out just fine. It, again, it'll take years for all of it to work out. So, seeing the collapse of the federal government, seeing the reduction of the state, seeing a return to a market where people get paid for creating value instead of getting paid for destroying value like the military-industrial complex does, like the militarized police force does, like the pharmaceutical corporations do, right, where people are encouraged to get sick and then seek medication to fix it as opposed to being encouraged to stay healthy. All of this stuff is going to collapse. The colleges are going to collapse. The federal base, you know, the colleges that are run by the federal government, or rather funded by the federal government. I don't know if any colleges are actually run by the federal government, but they're funded. You know, the the federally funded schools. Again, the schools are partially funded by states, partially funded by the Fed, right? So the states will still have some money to keep the schools alive, but they're going to have to cut back. They're going to have to make choices. They're going to have to get rid of bad teachers. They're going to have to figure out other ways to do things. All of these changes are going to mean improvement. It's going to hurt initially, but it's going to be improvement in the long run. But the very, very best, the greatest change that will come from all of this economic collapse is that there will not be as many ugly women anymore. And I really look forward to that because I'm fucking sick of going out in public and seeing these tattooed, pierced, fat, ugly women. Because when the economic collapse happens, those women, thank goodness for natural selection, those women are going to fucking die off because they ain't going to have money to buy food anymore because they have no fucking skills and no man, no man alive is going to take these fat fucking whale-like feminist fucking tattooed, pierced, foul-mouthed, short-haired bitch cunts out to a motherfucking restaurant for dinner. <laughs>